Brazilian authorities say they have plans in place to prevent the spread of the Zika virus during the Rio Olympics later this year. The mosquito-borne disease has been linked to severe birth defects and it's causing concern in Brazil and elsewhere. Officials say they will begin inspecting Olympic facilities four months before the games. They say they'll be getting rid of mosquito breeding grounds and there will also be <clears throat> daily sweeps during the games. Now there are new travel advisories uh, to more than 20 countries in the Caribbean and Latin America now. So for more on what we all need to know, we're joined by Dr. Jolene Hubert, a pediatrician and professor of medicine at the University of Toronto. Thanks for coming in this morning, Dr. Huber. My pleasure. I say Huber, but it's Huber. I'm sorry. Um, no what do we need to know about the Zika virus? Is it something that we should all be aware of at this point? Yeah, so it's, uh, as you said, it's a mosquito-borne virus. So it, the Zika virus uh, can infect mosquitoes. And then um, if you're in an area where there's infected mosquitoes, you can be bitten and then get the infection, the Zika virus infection. It is spreading pretty quickly, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've had maps showing that it's a very large area of Latin America. Right, so it was first discovered in 1947, and then in the 1950s, they were seeing it in Africa and in some parts of Asia. But in 2007, it um, started to appear in um, the southwestern Pacific Islands. And then last year, in 2015, came into the, it emerged in the Americas. So um, like you were saying, places in Mexico and, um, and Brazil, there was an outbreak and Colombia, there's an outbreak. And so it's, and it seems to be spreading more than 13 countries in those areas are now um, said to be affected. And so there is concern that it's spreading. And some Canadian researchers are saying may uh, spread further in the Americas, even into Florida and some of the, the United States Gulf states. Should we be concerned here in Canada? So I spoke with an epidemiologist yesterday and he said there's still a relatively low risk that it would um, uh, take root here in Canada, but there is risk for sure if you're traveling to an affected area uh, where we know that um, the Zika virus is um, affecting people. Yeah, and there's been images, uh, especially online, where you're seeing uh, the birth defects uh, from the Zika virus. So are pregnant women the ones most at risk here? So a Brazilian investigator noticed, it, noticed last year that there was a 20-fold increase in a birth defect called microcephaly. So that's when the baby is born with a small head and typically a small underdeveloped brain which can um, can um, you can see developmental difficulties out of that often and so they're thinking that there may be an association because that was they're seeing this high increase of microcephaly um, in uh, areas where the Zika virus has um, seen outbreaks and so there's only an association at this point and research is well underway to see whether it truly is a causal risk. Okay, so if you're pregnant, if you think you're pregnant, or if you want to get pregnant, should you just avoid travel to all of these areas right now? So the Public Health Agency of Canada has put out a health notice saying that if you're planning to travel to any of these areas, you should speak with your health care provider or doctor. And particularly if you're pregnant, you want to speak to your doctor about going to those places. And they are recommending to consider postponing travel. What about everyone else? I mean, what if you're a carrier of it? Are there any impact? Is there any impact? So for everyone else that goes, it's actually about one in five or one in four that actually will develop symptoms if bitten by um, a mosquito and get the Zika virus. And the symptoms are typically quite mild. So like a mild flu-like illness, fever, rash, some pink eye, um, some joint pain. And it usually lasts from three to seven days and is gone. So for the rest of us, it's not quite as um, concerning as possibly it could be concerning for a pregnant woman and typically just self-resolving. So rest and fluids and, um, you know, pain medication and anti-fever medication. Um, so it's, but you should still talk to your healthcare provider if you're considering going to those areas because we're getting more and more information and being updated um, daily. Yeah, good to know all of the information. Dr. Huber, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Dr. Jolene Huber is a pediatrician and professor of medicine at the University of Toronto.